Hi, this is Andrew Twedwell, owner of ABT Plumbing, Electric, Heat, and Air. Once again, with the show, You Got This, the show of DIY Do's and Don'ts. And we are zooming in here. Rosalie Brown is with me. She's in, well, sort of virtually with me. She's in Dana Point. I'm in Grass Valley. Um, and this, it's this wonderful air we've got right now. Um, I did try to get a, a little walk in earlier and um, boy, the smoke just came right in and it was a little rough. <laughs> it's unhealthy oh, for sensitive people now. So I've been um, chewing on Ricola's for the past two hours to try to soften my throat because the smoke's getting pretty bad. I mean, yeah, I'm whining about smoke and you know people are losing their houses. So yeah, poor me. Um, and well, businesses. I mean, you know, like, let's be clear. So what I always tell people is you're allowed to like be unhappy with what you're going through and also have <laughs> empathy for the other person. So it's not really like because bad things are happening in the world, you don't get to be upset that you have a sore throat. Like it's okay. It's right. just perspective, right? Like, so your little is trauma is going to be easily lived through and someone else is having more trauma. So, um, yeah, yeah we're, it's funny. We, uh, I, I was just noticing this morning, I was like, oh, it's a 15 degree spike from yesterday. So, uh, you know, I, I, my, my room is like got that where the sun comes in. And so you've got a good, you've got a pretty good barometer how the day is going to go. If you're getting up and like, suddenly you're like, oh my God, like I have way too many clothes on and you're barely, you know, you're wearing a tank top, right. like this is too hot. Um, so we're going to have a pretty good spike here today, I think, um, but we currently don't, you know, because I'm by the ocean, we currently don't have any smoke um, trapped in. And so we'll we'll see how that goes. I know a lot of people I talked to were so excited about that little, um, the fan thing we did where we, we put the filter in front of the box fan. Um, I saw a lot of people doing that, actually. And I thought that was yeah. pretty great. Yeah, it definitely helps. You know, if, if you don't have it set up on your um, on your HVAC system, it's a really good cheap way of doing it. And it's not gonna cost, it's not gonna break the bank, especially if you already have a fan, which most people do. You got a fan around the house and just go buy a filter. They're 10 bucks, 15 bucks for a good one and get a really good one. Cause you're not really worried about, you're not really worried about airflow so much. You're worried about more, more about filtration. So sure. um, unlike your heating and air system where you don't wanna use those high efficiency ones, by the way, once again. But yeah, I it's, it's I been only have a I only have a heating system, just to be clear. So I don't, <laughs> don't we, did, we didn't go in for the compressor. So um so we just have all the duct work. Um, but yeah, I see your point. I I for me personally, a lot of times when you talk about HVAC, I'm kind of like, hee hee, like I have 50% of that. And um yeah. my my system gets used maybe like I don't know, three times a year for like, you know, 20 minutes to like take the yeah. chill off. Um yeah. So I, I don't have that, but, uh, but it's interesting though, because, you know, having pets and stuff like that and all the dander, and then we had the windows. I mean, I still have the windows open almost all the time. If you don't have AC, you have windows open. Um, and so the amount of like smoke, ash, dander, dust, pollen that comes in is, is really alarming. I'm like, oh my gosh, no matter what you do. So it is a um, lot. So I do. So but it's funny, it is funny that you mentioned that, that you barely use it because that's I grew up in San Francisco and that's where I learned how to work on heating and air. Well, I didn't really learn how to work on air conditioning because no one had air conditioning. <laughs> All we did was furnaces because the same thing. And they were used maybe, you know, we were working on systems that were 80 years old mm. because, and people didn't want to replace them because they functioned and they spent maybe a hundred bucks a year on heating their house. So <laughs> they weren't exactly hip on you know changing out their furnace to save money right because it's more efficient so yeah it's all it's about a different efficiency. world on the coast yeah. but, but i do have a question for you hvac guy so um speaking of um all of the you know stuff in the air and and pets and pollutants in my own house um so there is a is there a way for me to actually kind of I, I'm I'm using the wrong word, okay? So when I think of flush, I think of toilets, and I also think of water. But is there a right. way for me to kind of flush my system to kind of because a lot of stuff collects up there all year long, and I, I'm not really using it throughout the year. So the first time we go to hit, you know, heat and ha and have heat pipe in, I'm just curious uh, the quality of the air that is going to be cascading into my house. It's really the fact that it's just sitting there. You don't really have any contaminants going in. It's just stagnant, right? Okay. But if you do want, you know, it's, you know, we are entering into fall. We've, we are now into fall. And it's not a bad idea to, you know, the next cool 
day to just turn your furnace on anyway, just to make sure that it works. Um, it's always better to start these things up before you actually need them. Just like, you know, it's better to make sure your car runs and has fuel before you head off on a long cross country journey or whatever. So same thing with your furnace and air conditioner, you know, the beginning of beginning of fall, when it starts, when you have a cool day, turn the heater on, give it a shot, Ch you know, change the filter, just change the filter at the beginning of the season, just so you, cause you know, that way you've got a couple months or a month before or you really have to deal with it again. And when it comes springtime, you know, exercise the air conditioner at the same time, you know, same way. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. And, and there is a lot of talk about, you know, duct cleaning and things like that. Um, if you're changing your filter and, do, and taking good care of your system by changing the filter, the duct system, and, and you've got a relatively new system, you should be pretty clean. It's really um, not necessary to have your ducts cleaned every year if you're changing the filter. Okay. If you're noticing you have a lot of allergies and things like that, it may not be a bad idea. Or if your system's really old, um, it may be pulling air in from the crawl space or the, the attic space. So yeah, you might want to get things cleaned up. Um, but generally speaking, as long as you're taking care of things, you should be fine. You should be fine. Mental note, I have to go to the store today and buy air filters. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the allergies are really like, there's some kind of breathing stuff going on. And with, with people being so concerned about like, <gasps> is this that awful yeah. virus, you know, like, I just kind of want to like, yeah, maybe I'll just change those out and um, give that a go and see if we can't change that up a little bit. Um, I, I also, I'm doing that. I'm doing that right now. Just reminding myself of my sore throat. It's not a COVID. It's just the smoke, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, a, it, it's, you know, not to make fun of it, but I mean, I, I kind of laugh sometimes when it's appropriate because, you know, everyone I, that I'm in close contact with is extremely careful. And so, you know, the second there's some, you know, <laughs> some difficulty breathing, you know, all of us yeah. go, oh, seriously. But I, I think in this case, I could probably improve the, the, my home's air quality pretty easy if I just go down to the hardware store when we get done here. So thank you for um, kind of accidentally reminding me I need to change out the filters. <laughs> The get show is that. good for something. The and show you may, is good and, for and what I would suggest when you do that, this is what I do, um, well, what I try to do is grab Keep it real, Andrew. five, Keep it real. five of yeah. them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I they're mean, a couple bucks. Grab a bunch of them. Yeah, that way I mean, when you need them. And then when I'm you're down to, do to two, every month. go buy some more. Yeah. Every month. I'm well, you at least look at it every month. You know, like mine are up in the ceiling. I've got two dogs, as you know. And, um, and, you know, we've got dirt around our property um, and the dogs bring in the dirt and all the stuff just like yours. And so even though they're on the ceiling, I still replace them about every two, maybe three months, depending on if we're using them. But I check them every month. And I, you know, I just visually look at, they start out white. Then the fact that I live in Nevada County, they start to turn a little reddish because yeah. of the red soil yeah. and, and a little brown. But when they start to get really dark, I just put new ones in. Yeah. About every yeah. two months. Well, there's your Very HVAC much. plug right there. There's your little DIY. Yeah. Don't, forget. Uh, don't I, forget. I think I think in a couple of weeks we'll probably mention uh, when is the time change? Like in a month or something. So, like that's kind of your other big kind of calendar. Uh, like, don't forget to change the batteries in your smoke detectors before they all yeah. start going off at two o'clock in the morning, right. um, at different times or all at the same <laughs> time. Or so, air filters and but even better batteries. Even better than batteries is just buy a whole new oh, yeah. um, smoke detector with a carbon monoxide um, module in it that has a 10 year battery. Put one of those in. Oh, yeah. It'll cost, you, it'll cost you like 50 bucks, 30 to 50 bucks, but you're done. One and done. And, then, and you, said, you, know, you said those are those are built for like 10, 10 year life kind of thing? The battery is literally good for 10 years on them. Oh. So you don't have to replace, you don't have to remember to change the batteries and they're just good to go. And you got a carbon monoxide detector at the same time. So that it's not a bad it's not a bad idea. You hit and all your safety points. Expensive. You hit yeah. all your safety points five minutes in. Good job. So when they turn the yes. channel or they turn off the video, now that we're doing video, um, right. they've got the most important parts. You like you know filters, carbon monoxide, and you know batteries. If you're not going to go that way, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Batteries are cheaper, but yeah, if you want to get it done, or you get a you know handyman in there to change them out to change your batteries. Cause I know some people up here 
Uh, but we've actually had people, we change out batteries when we're on a service call. Somebody asks us, we make sure to carry them with us. And somebody just called us to change their batteries and their light bulbs. And we're like, you might want to call a handyman for that. But if we have a service call, we'll take care of it for free. As but, part of the know, service you, call. Yeah. As part of the service. But if you have a handyman coming in, you may as well just change them out to, to ones that last for 10 years. And then you don't have to do it again for another 10 years. Sure. So yeah. it makes Time's a lot easier. But we should talk about a topic of DIY because I kind of we kind of went off off onto HVAC side and an air filter, but I was really wanting to talk about electrical because we haven't talked about this this one in a while um, in regards to troubleshooting basic electrical problems. And it's one of those things that comes up. We get calls about it all the time, um, and I've tr you know I've done my best to train my staff to be able to to hear the the clues, but sometimes we miss them and we go out and we literally push a button um, and most people don't want to spend $68 for us to push a button. So I want to let people know how to do this themselves. So in most homes, anything that's been built within the last 30 years, we have what's called a GFCI, ground fault interrupting circuit. It's a, a outlet that is on the wall in any wet areas. We install them in the kitchen, in the mm -hmm. bathrooms and in the garage and anywhere in the exterior of the house. The purpose of them is to make sure that if there is um, an open wire and you touch it and you're standing on a wet ground, it trips the ground fault and takes the power and dumps the ground. Doesn't go through you. That's the whole reason why. I'm, so I know people have complained about them, but hey, just trying to save your life here. So they're, they've saved a complain lot of people's about, lives. Complain about them why? I don't, what would be the... Well, they're a pain because they go out, right? They trip. Oh, okay. And I've had clients say, can you just like remove them and not and just put a regular outlet in? But no, we can't. There's not a reason for these anyway, things. Huh? Not in the United States, really. Really? And, there, okay. and this is a, this is a reason. The reason why is because it's saving people's lives. We don't want, you know, we don't want our clients to die because they accidentally dropped their hair dryer into the tub. I mean, that was a big fear, right? When we were growing up in the 70s, that oh, people died from every, stuff like that. Every horror movie has like, yeah. you know, that someone dropping a toaster or, a, or right. like- <laughs> Into I mean, the I, sink I, or into oh, the tub man. or something. I, I really legitimately, does. yeah, I really legitimately was scared of like appliances. Cause I'm like, oh, like they, that's, yeah. That's really ruined a whole generation of people like with those- Appliances in quicksand, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, so quicksand. far I've been good. <laughs> I've never, I haven't died of quicksand. <laughs> I know that the fear of like, not only are you going to get into the quicksand, but there's going to be something scary, like a tiger chasing you and you, which <laughs> tigers and quicksand, just so you know, don't typically go in the same place, but- I watched TV when I was a kid. I, I expected a lot more yeah. of these situations. And a, and, a, and a toaster plugged in right on a, on a tree that suddenly falls in the quicksand as you're stuck. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, they threw it all at once. So that's why so many of us are in therapy, but what are, that's a whole nother show. So. so anyway, these GFCIs, ground fault interrupting outlets, they're there to save your life. But they, when they trip and they, and they, can trip for various reasons. They're very sensitive and for good reason, because, you know, again, save your life. Um, you had to reset them, right? Because the little breaker trips. But what happens with those things, what we will do as electricians is um, we don't put ground fault interrupt outlets at every single outlet. What we'll do is we'll install one on a chain of outlets. Right. And then we run it through that GFCI so that all that whole bank of outlets are protected from that one single GFCI. And generally speaking, the outlets, you know, by, they should be in the same room, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes those outlets, that GFCI is in a pantry. Sometimes it's like with my old house, upstairs in the bathroom. Meanwhile, it's controlling the downstairs kitchen outlets because the bathroom was on top of the kitchen mm -hmm. and was done in a time when that really didn't he, the homeowner that was building it didn't really care and it saved them a little bit of time. Um, that can be a little frustrating to people because it trips and then that whole bank of outlets goes out. Yeah. Why did it go out? And you don't have a GFCI there. So sometimes you got to go search for them. And I know I had, um, I talked about this one friend, a dentist friend of mine and a female, and she had this problem of her kitchen outlets went out and she couldn't figure out why. And I'm like, look for the GFCI. She called me and there's no GFCI. 
There is no thing on the countertops and any of the outlets, nowhere. So she had to go looking around, I'm like look around in closets, look around in pantries, look around in the garage, look around someplace, look in the bathroom. It was literally behind a box of Cheerios in the pantry. I never forgot that this, story actually. Yeah, <laughs> there's this random GFCI outlet in the pantry with that was behind the shelf that was behind a box of Cheerios and she managed to set it and she called me inside and she was really excited because she fixed it and she she didn't have to get us out there so look for those GFCIs and like I said they can be in a different floor they can be in a different room um, they can be they won't be in a different building they will still be in the same building but they can be pretty far away and I can't tell you how many times people call us because they have outlets that aren't working and that's all it is it's literally flipping a switch so that's the first thing I would look. So if you've got an out, a bank of outlets that aren't working and they're in the kitchen or in the bathroom or in the garage or outside, look for the GFCI. If you've got a bank of outlets that aren't working within the like a, a living room or dining room, more than likely the electrician didn't hook them up to a GFCI, but still check it. Still, you know, double check and make sure. The next thing you want to do is actually go out to your circuit breaker box and see if the trip the breaker has been tripped. Um, and it can be a little confusing when you go out and look at the circuit breakers because um, it won't look like it's in the off position. Because right. when a circuit breaker trips, it doesn't swing all the way back to off. It just clicks a little bit. Um, and you'll notice that it'll be slightly out of line, but you may also have breakers that are slightly out of line anyway because of the way they are installed because sometimes they don't all fit square with the bus bar. So they'll be a little uh, misaligned. So if you see one that's a little misaligned and hopefully marked, um, unfortunately that's probably about half the houses or maybe even less than half the houses where yep. the, the breakers <laughs> are actually marked with what they're they're protecting. Um, if it's marked and it says living room um, outlets, then trip it. So you, what you wanna do is throw it all the way to the closed position and then reset it to the on position. And it's not a bad idea to do that twice just to make sure. I, I usually just do it twice just because that was what my old man taught me to do. And I don't know if it's necessary, but that's just what I do. That's um, what I was taught too. I was taught yeah. twice also. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, school, but I right? was like, that's, that's what my dad and grandpa told me and my uncle. So I was like, okay. I mean, I think they were also like test and see if that thing's live. I got a lot of weird advice too on the construction job sites because it's funny to make a little kid cry back in the 70s but uh I mean yeah. I, I, just but, lick your finger and touch it yeah that was yeah. yeah yeah but they did they did say the twice thing so I always do that I don't I, I don't have any I'm sure there's scientific proof of yes or no but I, I just do it anyway it's a little voice that comes on in my head I'm like okay yeah exactly and again I know yeah I don't know if it's I, you know I may be schooled by somebody out there who's an electrician who knows better than I I don't know um, but that was just what you, what I was taught to. So, so trip it a couple of times and then see if your outlets run. Um, I can't tell you how many times again that we go out and the breakers off. Right. Um, it's a simple things. And it's, it's, it's one of the things that we, we actually continue to train our staff on how to diagnose things, electrical things by first, is it plugged in? I mean, it's like, um, I was going to, I was going to have a really bad sports reference, but no, I can't remember it because I want to oh. say a, a, a hockey player. But anyway, this is a football. Hey, right? don't be don't but, be going uh, off on hockey. I you love know I'm hockey. a hockey fan. Hockey right. fan. Right. But you want to start with the basics, right? Is it plugged in? So that's that's where you want to, it. Does it have power? Um, that's where you want to start. Um, the uh, the other thing too is that maybe a, a you may be thinking that the the whole um, outlets are out. And it's just a light bulb. I've had that too, where I've gone out to a person's home and they thought that the power was out and they replaced the light bulb, but they put a light bulb in that didn't work. Oh yeah, I've and, had that happen. I mean, it happens. You don't just because you buy a box of light bulbs doesn't mean they're all gonna they're all gonna be good. True. Um, and they did it once, and then they're like, ah, it's broken. Call an electrician. So we go out and change the light bulb. Yeah, sixty eight bucks. Sorry. Um, How many? When they could have. How, how how many ABT technicians does it take to change a light bulb? That's the real question here. Hopefully just one. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> but it is, again, it's one of those things where, you know, um, we can check automatically... Check the most obvious. The most check obvious. the most obvious things. We automatically yeah. go, you know, sometimes we think of the worst, right? And yeah, it's just the process the best, of but, elimination. 
but pro just, eliminate the eliminate the simple things. Make sure the light bulb works. Make sure it's plugged in. Make sure the switch is on. I mean, I, I literally can't tell you how many times I've gone out and had to charge people money because of silly things like that. Just uh -huh. a button, literally pushing a button or literally changing a light bulb. And you feel a little guilty because that doesn't make the client look so smart and they feel a little silly because they didn't figure it out. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so make sure you have good light bulbs. We're not seeing that so much anymore with the new LEDs because most of the time, you know, they're testing LEDs and they don't really get, it's not like they have a filament in there that gets damaged during shipping or anything like that. So um, they're pretty, they're pretty bulletproof, but still, you know, just because you tried one light bulb, you may as well try another one. Um, another really good electrical diagnostic tool that I suggest pretty much every homeowner should have is a non-contact um, power tester. And I, we call them Wiggies. I know it's the wrong name, but that's just what we call them. You can pick them up for like 20, 25 bucks. They're really inexpensive. Um, I give them out to all my techs just to have them because it's a good um, insurance policy to make sure that the power isn't on when they touch things. Um, even though they turn the breaker off, we want to make sure we want to do a non-contact test to make sure the power is off. And what they do is it just it senses the, the flow of electricity through the wire and will literally sound an alarm that there is power to it. So um, for 20, 25 bucks, you can go to a hardware store, you can go to BNC, you can go to um, Hills Flat and pick one of these things up. It's just a non-contact electrical tester and you can put it in the hot side of the outlet and see if the power is actually on. You can put it on the outside of, the, of a lamp cord and see if the power is going through the lamp oh. cord. Um, I use mine all the time. I, I still, to this day, I just keep it around. Actually, I carry it with me in the RV because a lot of times we have problems with RV power because you're plugging into random um, outlets. That's a great thing to have in your RV as well. I carry two of them because um, they are cheap and I've had, I've gotten false positive, false negative results from them. Um, so, you know, like it says the power's off, but the power is really on. That doesn't so, sound good. I don't like the sound uh, of that. Um, while using them, it's a good idea to test them on, on a known energized device so that you make sure the thing actually works before you go test something that may be off. Because I, feel I have like I need, that situation. I, I feel like I need to go buy two of everything. I need to buy multiple filters. I need to buy multiple, multiple <laughs> air, you know, um, light bulbs. I need to buy multiple tools to make sure that, I mean, like, does anything Multiple just plungers work? like we were talking about last oh, week. So. Yeah, but you know I was right about that because the plunger <laughs> that goes in the bathroom does not belong in your kitchen sink. I don't care who you are. No. I was right on that one. 